Hi, this is Kanna Babu. In this video, we will discuss about arrays in C Sharp .NET. First of all, you must know what is an array. So, array is a user-defined reference type data type which is used to store multiple values of same data type in a single variable. Array, you can also call it array as a subscript variable. Array is used to store homogeneous values. Homogeneous values means multiple values belongs to the similar data type. Different types of arrays are single dimensional array, multi dimensional array, and jagged array. We will see one by one. So, single dimensional array in C sharp dot is the simplest type of array that contains only one row for storing data. That we can store the data in a single row. That is the concept of single dimensional array. The syntax to declare the single dimensional array is data type. And here, here you can mention array name is equals to new data type of here we need to mention the size of the array. Your syntax to store the value in the array is array name of index is equals to value. In array, each and every item can be identified by using index number. Always the index, uh, index of the array starts from 0 to size minus 1. Syntax to retrieve the value from the array. The syntax is array name of index. That is the syntax to retrieve the value from the array. So, let us see some sample examples how to work with single dimensional array. So, here I will try to open my Visual Studio Editor, Visual Studio 2013. And here I will try to open Visual Studio 2013. And here I will try to tell go to the new project. Select Visual C Sharp console application. And here I will try to give the name of the project as RS. Just click on OK. So, here I will try to declare the namespace using system and here I will try to declare a class. The name of the class I will give as something like program and here I will try to declare the main method static void main. So, first of all I want to create an array. I want to create an array. So, what is the syntax to create an array? Data type. I will give the data type int array name r is equals to new data type of I will try to mention some size. And here I will try to store the value in the array. Store the value in array. So the syntax to store the value in the array is array name of index is equal to some value 2, 3, 4, 5. So always index of the array starts from what? 0. 0 to size minus 1. Is it clear? And I want to display the value from the array. So I will try to print the value from the array. Console dot right line of air of 0. And similarly, I want to print 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is how if you want, you can store the values in the array and retrieve the value from the array. Here, I will try to change the values 20, here 30, here 40, and here 50. If you observe clearly that we can store 5 values in this integer array, and those 5 values are of integer type. So, in this statement, let us say what is happening. In this context, here first new, new will create an array. Here an array is created. The size of the array is what? 5. So, we can store how many values? 5 values. It's always index of the array start from what? 0. 0 to size minus 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, the name given for the array is what? R. The name given for the array is R. Always the index of the array start from what? 0. So, at the index of 0, I want to store the value that is 10. At the index of 1, I want to store 20. At the index of 2, I will store 30. Index of 3, 40 plus 50 here. Now, this is the how we can store the values in the array. Now, I want to print the values. Air of 0, that is 10. Air of 1, 20. Air of 2, 30, 40 and 50. If I want to print the sum of the values in the array, you can write what? Air of 0 plus, Air of 1 plus, Air of 2 plus, 3 plus, 4. But uh, repeatedly, if you observe clearly, we are trying to repeatedly doing the same job here. Repeatedly, we are printing the values in the array. So, instead of uh, writing the same statement repeatedly again and again, you can keep that code inside where the loop. So, here I will try to write the for loop to print the values in the array. So, whenever you want to work with loops, loops are basically divided into two types. One is range based loop, other one is condition based loop. For loop comes under range based loop, while loop comes under condition based loop. So, you must know when to use for loop and when to use while loop. If you know the range, go for for loop. If you don't know the range, go for while loop. So, if we know the range because the size of the array is fixed here. 
so the elements that are stored in the array are 5 so we can uh, rotate the loop how many times 5 times because I want to print 5 numbers so as I know the range so initial I use how much 1 so initial I is 0 is it clear now my number is incrementing or decrementing incrementing so the condition is what less than or equal to so I can confidently write the for loop and just so it is better to watch the video loops by Kannababu before uh, proceeding this arrays so that will be helpful for you so here instead of writing the same code again and again I will try to write the loop so I will write for initially int i is equals to 0 and here I will try to write i less than or equal to 4 i plus plus bracket open bracket close and here I want to print the value in the array that is here of i so here what is happening let us say this is my array and in array 5 values we have stored so the index of the array is what start from 0 this is 10 20 30 40 and 50 so these are the values that we stored in the array and the name given for the array is what er the name given for the array is er is it clear so always index of the array start from what 0 0 to size minus 1 so this is 0 1 2 3 4 so what I will do, I know that how many values are there in the array, so I want to rotate the loop. So initially i, initial i is how much 0. So my number is incrementing or decrementing, incrementing. How many times? One time. 0 plus 1, 1, 1 plus 1, 2, 2 plus 1, 3, 3 plus 1, 4. So if the number is incrementing, condition is less than or equal to. If you observe clear, initial i is how much 0. So 0 less than equals to 4, condition is true. Print, error of 0. Error of 0 means it will print what? 10 and throw the cursor to the next line. And here what you can do, i, i plus plus, i plus plus means what, i is incrementing, so initial i is how much, 0, so 0 plus 1, 1, 1 less than equals to 4 true, print what, error of 1, so print 20, i plus plus, 2, error of 2, error of 3, error of 4, if you want you can keep the break point here and check the flow of execution, press F5 to check the output, and here you can see press F11 to see the flow of execution, so initial i is 0, 0 less than equals to 4, condition is true, print error of 0, that is 10, i plus plus, now i is how much 1, 1 less than equals to 4, true, 2 less than equals to uh, 4, 3 less than equals to 4, condition is true, 4 less than equals to 4, condition is true, 5 less than equals to 4, condition is false, come outside and check the output, this is how you can print the values in the array. Now, if I ask you write a program to, to print the um, sum of the numbers that are available within the array. So, here we already know this loop will rotate how many times? 5 times. So, initially I will try to declare one variable. I will try to declare one variable with name what int sum. Initially sum is how much? 0. We already know the rules that a variable can store only one value. And whenever you modify the variable value, previous value will be erased. And here a simple logic you must know. Int x is equals to 10 if I try to write and x is equals to 7 if I try to write if I try to write x is equals to 7 so what is happening here here int is a data which will allocate some memory the name given for the memory is what x so what is the value that is stored 10 now in the second line x is equals 7 means what is happening here this 10 is replaced with what 7 are you following so variable can store only one value whenever you modify the variable value the previous value will be erased and in the same context you must know one more point that if I declare something like this int x is equals to 4 x is equals to x plus 3 and here if I write x is equals to x plus 6 something like this right so here what is happening initially x is how much for always left hand side variable will be there right hand side value will be there if right hand side variable is there consider as value the here x is variable here x is value here x means how much this is 4 so here the answer is 4 plus 3 how much 7 7 is stored in where x initially x is how much 4 initially x is 4 is it clear now here x x means right hand side value uh, value so 4 plus 3 7 so x is how much 7 so here 7 plus 6 how much 13 so x is how much 13 that is the final value so now here what I want to do, I want to add that um, value to my sum. So I will try to write sum is equals to sum plus error of i. 
is it clear and i want to print the sum finally is it clear here we already know this is my array this array is having some values like 10 and here 20 and here 30 and here 40 and here 50 now here i have declared one variable we already know the index of the array always starts from 0 right here the index of the array starts from 0 1 2 3 4 right so this is my array the name of the array is r now initial i is how much 0 0 less than equals to 4 condition is true so initially sum is how much 0 now sum sum is 0 0 plus r of 0 means 10 0 plus 10 sum is how much 10 now i plus plus so i is how much 1 1 less than equals to 4 true sum is how much 10 here right hand side value i told if right hand side variable is there consider as value 10 10 plus here of 1 that is 20 10 plus 20 answer is 30 as i told that a variable can store only one value is it clear so sum is how much 30 now here of 2 how much 30 30 plus 30 how much 60 now here of 3 60 plus 40 how much 100 here of 4 100 plus um, 50 150 now I use how much 5 so condition is false come outside print the sum I hope the answer is 150 is it clear like this you can uh, print the values that are available in the array find the sum of the numbers that are available within the array so here for more videos you can subscribe to the youtube channel and facebook group in the next video we will discuss about some more examples on arrays thank you